How beautiful the magical world of Disney is. We used to associate it with cute fairy tales about love and kindness. But why then has the Disney studio been increasingly called the evil corporation in recent years? How did a company that used to bring goodness to this world become a greedy, duplicious monster that cashes in on fans? This is about movies, and today we are going to talk about the dark side of Disney. How did the company insult Quentin Tarantino? What humiliations do Disneyland employees experience? And how does the studio pretend to be a fighter for feminism and body positivity? Before we start, click on the subscription button and the bell to know the truth about everything that happens in the film industry. On our channel, we tell everything as it is. Subscribe and let's figure this out together. Disney is the ideal world. Its history began according to the classic fairy tale canons, Once Upon a Time, when seven-year-old Walt Disney drew a neighbor's horse and successfully sold him this drawing for as much as five cents. A beautiful, made-up story, you say? But we think that it's difficult to come up with a more suitable beginning. The company, at the origin of which was a profitable deal, built its entire history of existence on it. The more profitable, the better. Money. It and not happy faces of millions of children around the planet became the main goal for owners of the Disney company. This is not a noble goal. This is a plan for world domination. Fine, I'm cool, I'm fine. <laughs> but let's be consistent. Disney's victorious procession began in 1928 when the cheerful little Mickey Mouse came to life and began to move on screens for the first time. Following the silent cartoon Plane Crazy was released Steamboat Willie. Almost immediately after that, Donald Duck, Goofy Dog, Pluto, and many others beloved by everyone appeared one by one. Immediately, recognition and popularity of these characters exceeded all expectations. The first big money set in motion a ruthless, joy-making machine. But cartoons are not where it ends. Popular characters migrated from screens straight to comics, toys, souvenirs, and a huge variety of goods that have been swept away and continue to sweep off shelves. With a clear goal to grow as much as possible, the company willingly sold the right to use characters in other countries, not limiting America. The first full-length animated film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, earned Disney $8 million. It was a serious, long-term project. Its creation took three long years. Of course, the cartoon was a great success, but behind this success were hidden problems. After all, Disney paid well only to chief animators, while the rest of the artists and workers were paid pennies. Not everyone knows that the good-natured grandfather Walt Disney was actually a very controversial and complex person. Some even called him a sadist, tyrant, and monster. Here, we will not dwell on Walt's biography. However, we have already revealed it in detail in the video on our second channel. Just click on the pop-up card in the corner and you will find out the true story of the life and work of Walt Disney. Click here in the corner and watch the video. Believe me, this video will surprise you and you will have something to tell your friends. Well, we're moving on. Disney started as a small animation studio but gradually turned into the largest corporation. So huge that it is difficult to realize its scale. Now, Disney has 11 amusement parks and two water parks at its disposal. From the middle of the 2000s, the company began to destroy competitors one by one and dictate its rules on the rights of an industry giant. In 2006, the Pixar company, known for its innovative technologies, was forced to surrender under the pressure of Disney and go under its patronage. Everything that Pixar authors, artists, and animators have produced from that moment released with the title Disney Plus. 2009, Marvel gave up. It would seem that the company which was known all over the world, whose heroes in popularity and recognition can easily compete with Disney characters. However, Marvel was sold for $4.5 billion. 2012, Lucasfilm. For $4 billion, Disney buys not only the company but also the rights to the Star Wars franchise. It was 2019. Walt Disney Company closed a deal to acquire part of the assets of the 21st Century Fox holding. 
After that, the company got the rights to X-Men, Avatar, and The Simpsons, and also closed the animation studio Blue Sky Studios. At the height of success from 2006 to 2014, Blue Sky was a real rival for Walt Disney and other animation studios and gave us many blockbuster cartoons, including Ice Age. Gradually, Disney was becoming not only the main one in the media market, but also the only one, without even giving other companies a chance to prove themselves. Thanks to its authority, Disney often influenced cinemas. An example was the scandal of 2015 with Quentin Tarantino, when he pre-booked a screening of The Hateful Eight in his favorite Cinerama Dome cinema during the same period when the seventh part of Star Wars was released on the big screens. The plan was simple. Two weeks in the dome would be showing The Force Awakens, and only after that would be shown The Hateful Eight. But Disney, well, wait a minute, Quentin is going to tell you about it much better than we do. As of yesterday, Disney came to the Arclight people and said, no. Wow. You are going to play Star Wars in the Cinerama Dome for the entire holiday season. And if you don't, if you honor your deal with the Hateful Eight, we will not allow you to have Star Wars, the biggest movie in the world. We will not allow you to show it at any of your arc like movie theaters. Oh. Oh. It was only about one cinema. Another reason for buying other studios is that no one is immune from the creative crisis. The company buys studios with a name and a fan base that will provide them with content for many years to come. Exactly this notorious crisis of ideas, coupled with desire to earn even more money, makes Disney for a decade revive old cartoons already into movies with real actors in lead roles. It's quite obvious why the studio chose this vector of development. Simple, not creative, but proven. Since 2019, the reboots of cult cartoons have increased many times over. Disney follows the old rule. The new is the well-forgotten old. It's enough just to take an old project, reshoot a frame into a frame, adding juicy visuals, and box office success is guaranteed. And where there is no place for live actors, modern computer graphics come to the rescue, as it was with the new version of The Lion King. The company is famously making money on remakes and, rest assured, will continue to do so. Disasters in the Disney can be understood. The status of a supergiant puts pressure on the company. You can't disappoint fans in any way, but it's possible to get burned on new projects. After all, any fresh story is a big risk with an unpredictable box office result while a story familiar to everyone significantly increases chances of success. Let's take a look at the statistics. In 1991, only two of the top 10 grossing record holders were sequels or remakes. In 2011, sequels and remakes subjugated the top 10, and those two exception films, which can hardly be called fresh, were still adaptations of famous comics. This scene is not as new as it seems. After all, Disney did not come up with Pinocchio, Snow White, Winnie the Pooh, and Mowgli. These and other fairy tales, which form the basis of its main hits, were already well known to viewers at the time the drawn adaptations were released. Parents, who took their children to cinemas for these fairy tales, knew them at least from books, which their parents read to them before going to bed. What we see today are, in fact, already remakes of remakes. But what are we going to blame Disney for? for the fact that they know how to make money and strain the fat, where apparently nothing shines anymore? Not at all. We are gathered here to talk about how power and greed can destroy the remnants of common sense. After all, almost all remakes or sequels, although they found box office success, were pretty mediocre from the artistic side. By the way, it is interesting to know your opinion. What is your favorite Disney cartoon of your childhood? Be sure to tell us in the comments. We read all the comments and like the coolest ones. Although Walt Disney took secondary plots, he at least worked on the content. He took old and often rather creepy stories and removed all hints of negativity. Blood, corpses, torn out hearts, and pecked eyes, which were more than enough in old fairy tales. By the way, some are still surprised to learn that Anderson's book about The Little Mermaid did not have a happy ending. Disney adorned the plot with dramatic conflicts and musical numbers, 
and deduced an absolutely understandable moral in the ending. In sociology, the special term even appeared for this. It's the trick which creates an idealized, convenient world that is easy to sell. Disneyfication. In today's trend, even such adaptation work is not noticeable. It exists, but purely stylistically. Disney cannot be made even more Disney than it already is. At one time, Walt Disney, explaining by himself why he wasn't interested in pursuing the sequel to The Three Little Pigs, said, You cannot surpass piglets with the help of piglets. Unfortunately, now Disney bosses are more concerned not with novelty, but with stable financial performance. Another Disney pressure point is sexism and chauvinism. This is a story about the fact that each fairy tale of the company ends with happily ever after. And if for many years such a happy ending did not bother anyone, then in the modern world, the idea that a good ending is only the one where the princess finds her prince is already very inappropriate. And seemingly, recently Disney has been trying to create heroines, such as Merida, who can stand up for themselves and without any princes. But even here, not everything went as smoothly as we would like. For example, when Merida officially became one of the princesses, it was decided to slightly retouch her. Was added makeup, hair was styled into a more feminine hairstyle, the body acquired more feminine outlines. Was the audience delighted with such a change? Surely not. And Disney backed down, leaving everything as it was before. And what about the estimated age of the villains in Disney cartoons? It's 55 or more, so it gives kids the wrong idea of older people. Get the Emperor a drink. Drink. Right. An independent study from Brigham University confirmed that 42% of children perceive older people as angry, grumpy, and even sinister precisely because of cartoons. And certainly, in our analysis, it's impossible not to mention Disneyland, a wonderful, dreamy world, the backstage of which, in fact, turns out to be not so fairy. Let's start with the fact that in Disneyland, quite officially exists segregation. Almost officially, Disney divides its employees into beautiful, young, and everyone else. Got a nice face? Well done. You can apply for the role of one of the princesses or one of the princes. Work at Disneyland for half your life and don't look like a princess anymore? Super! Go play Fairy Godmother. Are you not attractive either, youth or old? Well, we'll find a job for you too. How about this heavy and stuffy cartoon beast costume? According to park rules, animators from these casts must keep their distance from each other. The sellers got the worst. Given the frenzied cross-country ability, they have not only to work 24-7 without interruptions and free meals, but they are also paid pennies for that. Official statistics confirm that one in 10 Disneyland workers is homeless, and two-thirds literally don't have enough money even for food. And yes, we are still talking about the employees of the company, which has billions of dollars in revenue. Disney's greed is a seemingly endless theme. Just to think about the lawsuits filed against several children's hospitals in Florida, USA. The company's indignation knew no bounds when they found out that the images of their characters were depicted on chamber walls. And all this was without observing any copyright or buying a license. And the company was not very interested in the fact that the hospital workers did this not in order to snatch a piece from the multi-tycoon, but simply to cheer up sick children. Disney characters had to be removed from walls. They were replaced by cartoon characters from Universal. They were ready to incur losses for a good cause. The next scandal erupted after the investigation which was made by one of the new portals. It turned out that Disney owns as many as 12 Chinese factories. The company uses cheap, often child labor. As factory workers said, they have to work 16 hours in completely unbearable conditions and don't even get well paid. And all this despite the fact that any product with the Disney trademark doubles in price, relative to the same thing but without this trademark. Unfortunately, there was not enough evidence to institute legal proceedings, and the company disavowed the factories, citing the fact that they were not aware of the lawlessness going on there. In other words, they got out. 
Another example of the company's greed is when in 2019, the American licensing agency representing Disney sued Emerson Elementary School in California. The thing is that at the traditional parents' evening of students and adults, one of the parents brought a CD with a remake of The Lion King to watch it with the children. The entrance ticket cost $15, but in fact, it was a donation for the school needs. At the same time, students could not afford such expenses were allowed in for free. Such events are not uncommon in California because the financing of educational institutions is considered a growing problem in the state. The licensing agency on behalf of Disney demanded that the school pay $250 for a one-time license. This is not the largest amount, but the fine amounted to about a third of all the funds raised at the charity event. Formally, Disney's complaint is absolutely legitimate. However, demanding money from a public school is not entirely appropriate for a studio that has earned more than $1.6 billion on the film adaptation of The Lion King. Subsequently, the head of Disney, Robert Iger, apologized for the fine. But the unpleasant aftertaste still remained, and the company, whose market capitalization for 2020 amounted to $327 billion, again confirmed its status as an evil corporation. So, what conclusions can be drawn from all these facts? First, skeletons are hidden behind every chic facade. And behind every beautiful story, there may be a rather unpleasant truth, which shouldn't be ignored and which you need to know. And the second one, Money is nevertheless not the most important thing in life. Reputation is more important. You can't earn all that money, but losing your reputation in the pursuit of another billion is easier than ever. And this is just the tip of the iceberg, because Disney siphons money from your wallet in other ways. For example, superheroes. Wherever you click, they are everywhere. For example, you can click on a video that appears on the screen and you will learn about how they took over pop culture the hearts of millions of viewers, and your wallet. Be sure to check it out, it's worth your time. And don't forget to like this video. That's all for today. It was about movies, thank you for being with us today, and see you soon.